Cyberpunk is one of the most stylish and iconic looks in fictional universes. The subject leans into the look of punk with the combination of sci-fi gadgets and augmentations. The genre allows for various stories to be told, from classic Blade Runner questioning what it means to be human, to things like Transmetropolitan using absurdity to display the absolute abuse of power and the lack of freedom from its inhabitants. Recently, I've been playing a video game that I see as a damn fine piece of cyberpunk media that you might just dig. That game is Valhalla, cyberpunk bartender action. I want to take you on a field trip for the remaining time we have together. Grab yourself a delicious beverage for comfort, because we're going to walk through the streets of Glitch City and into Valhalla. Uh, don't mind the smell. So one of the most remarkable aspects of Valhalla is its premise and how ultimately you are not the center of the universe as the player. If you've seen my Witcher 3 Hearts of Stone macho recommendation, you know I'm really resonating with stuff that isn't on the scale of the fate of the world on your shoulders, that having smaller stakes allows for more personal and relatable stories. And what I love so much about Valhalla is how in a setting of guns for hire, detectives, corporate overlords, and sentient androids, we interact through the setting as Jill Stingray, a human bartender spending her nights in the shoddy bar Valhalla. Her two co-workers are Gil, a pretty cool dude with a questionable past he prefers not to talk about, and Jill's boss, Dana, an absolute chatette of a woman who did various occupations from lumberjack to wrestler. Rumor has it the bar is closing due to politics outside our character's control, so all we can do now is serve mixed drinks and change lives. So Valhalla plays like an interactive visual novel, meaning there's going to be a lot of dialogue, both from your customers and Jill. But what makes this interesting besides clicking through text is preparing drinks. At first glance, this may look like a lot, but don't worry, your pal Macho's got you covered. So let's break down this section right here. These are your ingredients to make drinks. Each one is used for a particular flavor. Adelheid is sweet, Bronson extract is for a bold taste, Powdered Delta, formerly used in rat poison, makes a drink sour, Flannelgade is for spice, and Caromite? Whatever, this one right here is what makes your drinks alcoholic. These are going to be your bases for your drink concoctions. This book on your left is what you'll use as recipes for your drinks, using various search options from tags to alphabetical order to taste categories. Once you click a drink's name, it will tell a combination of the ingredients you'll need. To prepare a drink, you will drag the ingredient into the shaker. The boxes below indicate how many total pieces are in the mixer so far. If the recipe says on the rocks, click the ice button. If it says age, click the age button. When you read a recipe, it'll either say mix or blend. This can be a little confusing at first, and that is totally okay, but you'll soon find out it is not that bad. When you finish putting your recipe together, click the mix button regardless of blending or mixing. When you mix the drink, click the stop button after a few shakes. I like to do it after about four. If you want to blend it, you're going to wait until the shaker speeds up the shaking like this. If you see that, click stop. If the drink turns out like this, there may have been a slight goof up, but there's no rush in serving the drink, so take as long as you need, just click the reset button, and go from there. And if a customer orders a big drink, that just means you need to double the number of ingredients of the original. If a drink uses more than 10, that drink is already classified as big, though alcohol does not count towards the ingredient list. One minor point to look out for is when a customer orders a drink, be sure to read the text box before you skip it, because Jill can get distracted at work if you don't buy specific items at certain times, meaning her text box that usually offers hints or restates the order can be filled with nonsense info, so be sure to pay attention just in case. And that's the basics gameplay-wise, and what's cool is depending on the drinks you serve and how much alcohol you put into them with optional choices, you can affect the story and get different endings because of it. I hope this was able to help you out in understanding how it plays. Now, let's talk about the people you serve. If I had to say what the biggest appeal of this game was, the augmented with nanomachines beating heart of this game, it would be the characters, people of all corners of Glitch City living their lives the best they can. 
From newspaper CEOs to overworked interns, Android pop stars, George Costanza, Jacked Valkyries, and even a Rad Sheba. Yeah, you heard me. These characters are fascinating, and they have a lot to talk about. One of my favorites is Jamie. This dude is a bounty hunter and yet one of the most polite and friendly characters in the game. One night, Jamie discussed the difference in outlook between being considered a bounty hunter and a mercenary. While the latter does any job for a profit, a bounty hunter implies a sense of choice, a freedom to select whatever type of contract they want. Conversations in this game are long, but they're also really interesting. People have all kinds of stuff to talk about, from their jobs, family dynamics, to debating the policies and choices of a glitch city. While your character Jill sits behind a counter and serves drinks, Every character feels like a different connection to this world, leading to a sense of place and believability to it. When playing this game, there's this sense of excitement of who will walk through these doors next, and it's exciting. Like, what kind of person are you going to be serving, and what do they value? The characters create this anticipation for the player, even commenting on other patrons without directly knowing them. Now, I've got one other point on characters I want to talk about, but first, I want to go over something I think is really important to mention. Valhalla does a great job at presenting these characters from all facets of Glitch City and making them really engaging. But there's one character I want to go over that, while I understand the idea behind them, is something that doesn't really sit right with me and I want you to make your own decision on this. That character is Dorothy. Personality-wise, she's a fun character, but where it gets weird and a bit uncomfortable is that she works in a very adult field and has the look of a 12-year-old, while in-game she is 25. There's this disconnect when this tween-looking character starts talking about a controversial profession and making innuendos that had me thinking, I'm going to jail! The trope of the sexualized young-looking character that is much older is one I'm not a fan of and honestly makes me uncomfortable. It might not bother you, but I just wanted to go over that real quick just in case. I think there's a lot of other stuff that makes this a great game to try. Still, I couldn't in good conscience recommend it without mentioning that point. So that decision is entirely up to you. Out of all the characters in Valhalla, there's one that I can really relate to. One that, after a period of time, finally clicked for me. That character is our protagonist, Jill. Jill is someone who seems like a cult person, one who doesn't show her emotions very often and usually keeps herself in check. The first time playing this game, I just figured, okay, she's the cool detached bartender. Good to know. But as the game progressed, I began to get Jill. And while I didn't see eye to eye with her character or some of her decisions, I felt at least an understanding of her. But to properly talk about it, I'm gonna have to get into spoilers. If you want to play the game blind, by all means, feel free to skip this part. I've left timestamps in the video for the spoiler section and the part afterward talking about how you can play this game. If you don't want to hear anything, now's the time to bounce. But if not, let's do this. What I found compelling about Jill was her previous relationship with a girl named Lenore. The two women met in college and had been together for a while. In fact, Jill was close to Lenore's little sister, Gabby. But with most things, it was a relationship that ended and not on the greatest terms. Jill wanted a sense of freedom in her life, a feeling of control that she didn't have at the time, and their argument resulted in a broken vase and a severed relationship. Afterwards, Jill really embraced her role as a bartender, socializing with all kinds of people, while her apartment was a reminder of her choice. One that she almost has a strange fixation on, with a framed photo of her previous love and an unopened letter. She kept this up for about three years until the start of the game, where it's rumored that Valhalla is at risk of closing, leading to our character questioning what she'll do now. The bar was an outlet, it was something to do for Jill, and having that crumble away is making that increasing sense of dread for the past draw closer in. And it hits its peak when Gabby visits the bar, informing Jill that Lenore has passed away due to a nanomachine rejection in her body lashing out at her for leading to her sister's death and leaving her behind, all for a sense of freedom. And this moment is something I can really relate to, but not on the literal exact this I have had someone die from a nanomachine rejection, but in a much more smaller scale. So a little something about me was when I was in college, I was really into this one girl I'd been friends with for a while. I shot my shot and I got turned down. 
But looking back, what sucked the most was how I assumed that just because she said no, that we would still be friends just like before, like everything would be the same. But what happened is that I got ghosted. I didn't hear from her again for a while, and I felt completely devastated about it. I had lost this person I was really close to, and I kept trying to do things just to take my mind off it, and not for the sake of doing them for fun or enjoying them. I tried socializing and putting myself out there a bit more. I kept playing video games to escape that crappy feeling when I was alone in my dorm room. I even focused on my studies as something to do. That was why I was originally there, after all. Yet, for years, I still kept thinking about that person. I kept feeling like I needed a sense of closure for it if I was going to get past it, like I needed to get an apology, or I needed to apologize, or something, anything, to get rid of the way I felt. That awful feeling I had wasn't great, but it was cool to play a video game that could articulate that feeling so well. It made me feel like I wasn't alone in that. I tried to talk to my friends, and they couldn't exactly relate to it other than, yeah, that sucks, I'm sorry, man, and they meant the best they could, but just Playing something that can really articulate it is great. And what I came to think about it years later is that you shouldn't get hung up on the past. No matter what you do, you can't change it. All you can do is acknowledge what happened and learn from your mistakes and failures. Use them to shape you into a person you can be proud of. Have the past moment that makes you cringe with a sudden fury as a tool for future growth. And it seems like Jill goes through a similar thing, because by coming to terms with herself and sharing her experiences with her friends, she can find the strength to acknowledge her choices and make amends with Gabby. Valhalla might be a video game with corporate overlords, a vaporwave pixel art style, and an absolute banging soundtrack, but its biggest appeal to me is its people. Even though they are just images and blocks of text, they feel authentic in their believability. The game takes place in a few rooms, yet I feel like I am a part of this city. And you may just have it too, if you decide to grab a mixer and give this game a shot. Valhalla Cyberpunk Bartender Action is a video game with lax and engaging gameplay, believable and interesting characters, and a unique premise that makes it an easy recommendation. I'll be sure to leave a Steam page link in the description if you want to give it a shot on PC. It's also on PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch at this current recording time. If you've made it this far in the video, I just want to say thank you a whole bunch for listening to my thoughts, and if you decide to play it, I hope you have a fantastic time in Glitch City. I was about to say Night City, what is this, Cyberpunk 2077? Uh, feel free to rate this video whatever you think of it, and if you enjoyed it and this is your first time here, I would be honored if you subscribe to stay up to date with my future recommendations or share it with a friend you think would be interested. My name here on YouTube is Polymacho. Thank you so much once again, and have a excellent rest of the day.